in quadrupole magnet g was the gradient, uh, gradient and which is a constant quantity in sextupole magnet rather than g the derivative of g is constant means second derivative of the field is a constant quantity because it is a parabolic curve depends on the x square so second order derivative will be a constant quantity means magnetic field will vary with s by 2 x square minus y square and horizontal component of the magnetic field will be s x square now you can see here in the horizontal component x is multiplied by y means this sextupole magnet will generate coupling in the beta tone motion means horizontal motion will be coupled by the vertical beta tone motion in the presence of the sextupole now we can calculate the kick of a sextupole also as we calculated the kick due to quadrupole so again the same formulation will be used magnetic rigidity is here and b by t here this formulation for computing the kick has been used many times now at the place of b y we will put this value so this will be m l x square minus y square here m will be s by b y so this will be half m l x square minus y square now because we are introducing this sextupole magnet at the place of non-zero dispersion means where the dispersion is finite means displacement of the particle from the design axis can be written down as the displacement due to beta tone oscillation and displacement due to dispersion into delta p by p now we will put the value of x in the sextupole kick so this will be half ml and at the place of x we have written down this so the square of this quantity plus y is in vertical plane there will be no dispersion because we are considering that bending in the synchrotron is taking place in the horizontal plane only and dispersion will be only in the plane of bending so in vertical plane there will be no dispersion so we have only horizontal dispersion in the case of a synchrotron in general due to imperfections there may be a vertical dispersion also but in this course we are not considering imperfections in the lattices means we are considering only perfect lattices so when we will open this bracket we will have x beta tron square d square plus delta square and 2dx delta and y square now you can see that this term here depends on x into d this is the similar term which we have seen in the case of a quadrupole means this term can be used to cancel the term generated by the quadrupole and if we can cancel that term in the quadrupole peak then chromaticity can be corrected and these are extra unwanted term due to sextupole magnets so sextupole magnets corrects the chromaticity however it generates various unwanted term and you can see that these unwanted term is de depends on x square delta square and y square means our dynamics becomes non-linear when we introduce the sextupole magnet in the machine how we can calculate the chromaticity now we quantify it that what is the amount of the chromaticity if we know the lattice or if we know the twist parameters or the strength of the quadrupole can we compute the chromaticity we are going to derive that formulation now suppose this is a complete path in a synchrotron design path and there is a one quadrupole and we are looking the effect of this quadrupole on the off momentum particle because up to the quadrupole dynamics remains linear so if we will calculate the effect of one quadrupole and we can quantify it then for the all the quadrupoles effect will be superimposed so we will calculate the effect of one quadrupole on the of momentum particle so 
let us say that this quadrupole has the transfer matrix MQ. And after this magnet, and again reaching to the beginning of this magnet, the matrix is MR. So if we multiply these two matrices, we will get the one turn matrix or a matrix for the one complete turn in this enclosure. So this is the M, one complete uh, matrix for the one complete turn and these are the matrices multiplied. By. Now we want to see that if the strength of this particular quadrupole has been changed, what will happen? So let us see that. The one turn matrix has been changed to M with subscript N. When the quadrupoles matrix has been modified to MQN. This matrix is of the quadrupole with changed strength. MR, rest of the matrix in this synchrotron will remain same. So MR is same as is here. So we can put the value of MR. Here you can say that MR is equal to m q inverse m so let us put this value of m q here so you will get the result m q n m q inverse m here it is the quadrupole matrix with change in strength it is the quadrupole matrix inverse with correct strength so quadrupole matrix with the correct strength is 1 0 k l 1 here again we are considering the thin quadrupole means we are working in the thin lens approximation so inverse of this matrix will be 1 0 minus k l 1 only sign of this element has been changed determinant of this matrix is 1 now if quadrupole strength has been changed say change is delta k l so new matrix of the quadrupole will be 1 0 k l plus this change and 1 here. So we now have one turn matrix under the changed quadrupole strength. It will be like that. This will be the matrix from here. This is the matrix from here and it is the one turn matrix when there was no strength change or quadrupole has the correct strength. Now when quadrupole has the correct strength, we have seen that one turn matrix can be written down in this fashion. Cos phi plus alpha sin phi, beta sin phi, minus gamma sin phi, cos phi minus alpha sin phi. Here the twist parameters alpha, beta are at the location of the quadrupole, which we are considering. So, this one turn matrix, if multiplied by these two matrices, we will get the new one turn matrix with changed strength. And now, in suppose due to changed strength of quadrupole, beta has been changed to beta n, alpha has been changed to alpha n, and phi phase at once becomes phi n. The new one turn matrix can be written down in new changed parameters like this cos phi n plus alpha psi phi n beta psi n phi n because still one turn periodicity is there so one turn periodic matrix can be written down in this fashion so if we compare the elements of lhs and rhs we can get the change in tune due to delta p or change in strength there should be a matrix this is written wrongly there will be a b c d which is the multiplication of 1 0 k l plus delta k l 1 and 1 0 minus k l 1 so this produces a matrix a b c d and this will be here and after multiplying these all things together we will get this matrix so here you can see that this element is still cos phi plus alpha sin phi but this element now contains beta sin phi multiplied by the error of the quadrupole or strength changes in the quadrupole.
Now, if you can compare the trace of these two matrices, now these two matrices are the same. So, we can compare the trace. When we will compare the trace, only cos phi will be there. So, in the new lattice, by lecture side, we don't have any trace parameter and it will be easier to obtain the phase change. And phase, if we obtain the phase change, we can obtain the tune change. And if we can obtain the tune change, chromatic is defined by the change in tune. So, 2 cos phi n will be 2 cos phi plus delta kl beta sin phi. This is the trace of this matrix. Trace. This can be written down as 2 cos phi n minus cos phi. It will be delta k beta sin phi. And this cos c minus t formula is applied here. It will get sin, sin phi n phi n and sin phi plus phi n upon 2 is equal to 1 by 4 delta k l beta sin phi. Now because we are assuming that energy is spread not much, means delta p by p is a smaller value. So, change in strength delta K will be also a small number and that is why the change in phase will also be smaller. So, we can write down sin delta phi by 2 and sin phi plus delta phi by 2 is this. Now, using the approximation that delta phi, phi minus phi n is small. So, sin delta phi by 2 can be approximated as delta phi by 2. And here we can neglect the delta phi in comparison of the 2 phi. So, 2 phi by 2 will be sin phi and this will be RHS. So, now sin phi and sin phi cancels out and you have delta phi is equal to minus half delta kl beta. Delta phi is basically the phase advance over the one term. So, it is related with means number of beta tone oscillations over a one complete turn can be obtained which is a tune is equal to so phi can be written down as 2 pi mu so delta phi can be written down as 2 pi delta mu so this is written here and this equation using this equation you can get the delta mu so, change in beta on tune is beta at that location multiplied by the change in strength. Now, if water pole has higher beta at this location, the chromaticity will be higher because delta nu will be higher in that case. Now, this delta kl we have calculated earlier that this will be equal to kl delta. Is this delta is delta p by p. So, this will be the chromaticity. Now, you can see that this chromaticity is calculated only for one quarter. So, for calculating the whole lattice, we have to integrate this formula over the entire circumference. So, this is the chromaticity for the synchrotron or a complete ring. Now, you can see here that k into beta, this combination generates the chromaticity. Means, higher strength of the quarter pole will generate higher chromaticity. Means, if a lattice has a stronger quarter poles for a stronger focusing, it will have large chromaticities and if beta is higher at the location of the quarter poles then it will generate the higher chromaticity. Now we have seen that in the case of quarter pole the kick for the off momentum particle was k l x delta means kick proportional to x into delta and for a sextupole magnet this kick was and DLX delta. So you can say MDL of the sextopole is equivalent to KL of the quadrupole. So if KL of the quadrupole generates this chromaticity, then MDL 
will generate a contribution using MD data. So this is the formulation of the chromaticity when sex to poles are also introduced to correct it. Now you can see that this is the natural chromaticity because it is the chromaticity generated only by the quadruple. So this is the natural chromaticity. And it is the chromaticity when we consider sex to pole also. And now properly choosing M, we can cancel out this K beta. So by properly choosing the strength of the sex to pole magnet, we can make this integration zero and chromaticity will become the zero. In this fashion, sex to pole magnets can be used to correct the chromaticity. Now you can see several things here. Suppose we want to produce some MD beta combination for a given K beta. So if sex to poles are placed at higher dispersion and higher beta function location, then M will be small. Means a small value of M can generate the required k beta if d and beta is small. d and beta are the dispersion and beta tone function at the location of the sextopole. So sextopole should be placed where the dispersion and beta function is large. Because if sextopoles are going to be stronger, we have seen that these magnets will generate a nonlinear effect. And that nonlinear effect will be also stronger and nonlinear instability in the machine can be there. And under this strong sextuple, lattice optimization becomes a very typical job because it involves nonlinear dynamics. So we want that smaller strength of the sextuple should do our work. So in this fashion, sextuple should be placed at the location of higher dispersion and higher beta function. Now one question can arise here. If in vertical plane there is no dispersion, then how the sextopole magnets can correct the vertical chromaticity? And the answer is that because you have Bx is equal to Sxy for the sex to pole magnets and if we put x as as x beta ton plus d delta y so we will have a term d into y delta so horizontal dispersion can be used for correcting the vertical chromaticity also and this is only because sex to pole magnets generate coupling between these two motions horizontal and vertical beta motion so using that coupling the horizontal dispersion can also be used to correct the vertical chromaticity in a simple way. now when we introduce the sex to magnets the dynamics becomes non-linear and we have to solve the non-linear Hill's equation in that case. And in the presence of non-linearity, up to certain amplitude of the beta tone oscillations, oscillation remains stable. Outside that amplitude, beta tone oscillation becomes unstable. So non-linear dynamics or introduction of the sextopole actually separates the whole is facing to stable zone and unstable and outside that stable zone beta tone motion will become unstable and as the sextopole becomes stronger and stronger for correcting the larger and larger chromaticity this stable space shrinks down and running the machine becomes difficult so an accelerator designer Optimize the sextopole scheme for enlarging this stable beta tone, stable area for the beta tone motion. This stable area 
is known as dynamic aperture in the accelerator channel. So, sex, introduction of the sextopole lowers down the dynamic aperture and an accelerator designer has to optimize the sextopole scheme and lattice in such a way that we get the larger dynamic aperture. So, if we introduce the sextopole for correcting the chromaticity, whole Pandora box of the nonlinear dynamics opens and it becomes a difficult problem to optimize the sextopole scheme when we are introducing very strong water pole for tight focusing. Next lecture, we will cover completely new aspects of the dynamics that is the longitude.